Cody. <coughs> Cotton Branch Animal Sanctuary was started as a farm animal sanctuary. Hey, sweetie. 12 years ago, we had cat and dog sanctuaries and we had wildlife taken care of, but nobody was taking care of cows, pigs, whatever. So that was our purpose. Uh, Odie was in a factory farm fire when he was a piglet and he was raised by someone. So that's why he's so sweet. We're in Leesville, South Carolina, southwest of Columbia. We have a cow. We have lots of different kinds of pigs, ferals and different breeds. We have two sheep, some goats, and we have horses and donkeys. This is Tucker, who's a little bit of a legend. He and his mother, we, we took in, they were totally starved and emaciated. We could not save his mother. And uh, it took about six months for him to, to be in fairly good shape, and he's in very good shape now. We are working on Tucker's Law which I hope will make it illegal. When you're tired of your horse, you just put it out in the pasture and let it starve to death. This is really a grassroots kind of a thing. It's all donations. We're a 501c3. Animal lovers support us. We do tours. We have volunteer days every second Saturday. Unfortunately, the majority that we have right now are pot-bellied pigs. Pot-bellied pig epidemic started in the 90s when the actual Vietnamese pot-bellied pigs were brought over and everybody thought that would make a great pet. There's no clear lines of that anymore. They've all been mixed up and inbred and everything. People keep believing that they're gonna stay small. This pig is only two years old, so he has another year to grow and he probably already weighs 100 pounds. That's normal. People want a little tiny baby, and of course, babies grow up. We get about 10 pig calls a week. We will try to place it somewhere else first, and they only come here as a very last resort because we have been at capacity for a couple of years. The ones that used to be house pigs, they need a lot of attention because that's how they were raised, and they really grieve when the people bring them here and just drop them off. They're, they're like, where's my family? They grieve for weeks and we, we work with them and try to give them extra, extra attention. Some people think it's so much fun to feed a pig that they just keep on feeding. This is Ellie Mae. She came in very obese, so their skin on their forehead comes down and closes their eyes and their ears, so she's, she's deaf and blind just because of her fat. So we've got her on a diet. She's lost about half her weight, and um, she's starting to hear better now. Well, Goldie here is the only one who is 100% feral. Feral pigs were brought into the country in the 1800s for hunting. Most of the time we get babies. After they've killed the mother, they look under a bush and there's 10 babies, so they bring them. That's how she got, got here. These other ones are half feral, which you can tell by how long their noses are. A lot of people think that, that pigs and dogs get along real well, and they might for a while, but a pig is prey and a dog is a predator. So at some point in time, either the pig gets a little cut and there's blood, or he makes a real high-pitched squeaky noise. The dog just goes berserk. We have several here that have lost their ears because of dog attacks. About two years ago, somebody threw two gamecocks over the fence. We couldn't catch them. So everywhere you look now, you see gamecock families. Bob started out his life in a fraternity house. Then he went to some people who couldn't afford to fence him in, so he ended up getting grabbed by some dogs. 
and we had to get him surgery on his back. He's got some back scars and a few emotional scars too. They're very sensitive. I believe that all animals are sentient beings. I think it's only fair that there's someone around who can look out for these animals. If they end up in a shelter, they're more often than not, they're euthanized. Can't save them all, but we give a good life to the ones we can save.